Hello, Hello everyone in podcast listening land. I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Barner. And, and we're, we're sisters. sisters. Welcome to Sugarcoated Murder, where we'll discuss and probably inappropriately laugh about and comment on. Yep, one of our favorite subjects murder. murder. Oh, and we love to bake. And why not combine our two favorite subjects baking and killers? Drink Bloody Marys. Dang right. My goodness. That's the only reason we're drinking. Cheers to that. Ooh. Cheers to it. Girl. Lord, be. So, mm-hmm. how's the week been? Mm. You know, it hadn't been bad. I can't complain. Okay, okay. I had a couple Mondays in a row. Right, right. But then it got it straightened out by Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good to know. I found hey, you. How I, are you, buddy? Oh, he's in the kitchen. I see him. You. No, he's just picking his head around. Yeah, yeah. He wants to know what's happening. Hi, what's happening? What's ha- I saw you were eating before because you were scared I was going to eat your food. Yes. I know. I do that often. And now you talk to him and he's going to start to whine. He was already whining. He was so not whining. Let's start. Was not whining. Okay. So your week was good. My week was good. Oh, Here I was going to tell you, I found that the last, the less interaction I have with people outside my circle, uh-huh. the better week I have. Oh. <laughs> so wait, does that mean me too? No, you're in my circle. Oh, Okay. Outside of your circle. Correct. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm all about that. Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, good, good. We're good. Yes. We're really good. And it's your week to cook. It Yay. is. So, that's even better yes. for you. Yeah. What are you going to cook? So, I am going to cook cheesecake. Oh, that's a doozy of a doozy. Yes. And it's, it is a cookies and cream cheesecake. Oh, wow. But the recipe is just for a plain cheesecake, not even with a crust. And so. Oh. And then I turned it into... Okay. A cheesecake with a crust. You know, I never made a cheesecake, but I need to. I need to learn how to make a cheesecake. It's important because Mama used to make a really good one that had that sour cream. Yeah, well, she's supposed to be sending me a picture of that recipe, but I ain't got it yet. Oh, okay. So, um, but yeah. So I didn't realize she still had it. She does. Remember, she had like a. All she of her has, really great recipes yeah. that she left at one of her houses in Richmond. Oh, that might be why she I never went, get the recipe, and she always tells me she's going to send it. Yeah. She probably forgot that she doesn't have it. She might. Or but she it might came from it. Linda Dudley. Oh, that's right. So we might be able to get it from her. Yes. Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we um, publish this episode, we need to send it to Linda Dudley because Mama forgets how oh. to... Linda, we hope that you're able to listen to this episode. Yes. Please. And when you listen, you'll be like, I gotta send those girls that cheesecake recipe. Yes, indeed. So I guess it came from her her father in law or her husband's grandfather, somebody that owned a bakery, and this was their cheesecake <gasps> recipe for their bakery. I did not know that. Yeah. So it's been around for a long time. Oh yes. Long I want to get time. that recipe because I yes. really, really like the cheesecakes with the little sour cream. Me too. That topping, topping is like real it. to me. That's real Italian cheesecake. Yeah. Anyway, that's how I remember it. Back to my recipe. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep drinking. The name of this recipe that I called it years ago when I wrote it was best cheesecake ever. And then in parentheses, it says very, very, very good. Oh, wow. So I have used this recipe um, for, like I did a, a chocolate cake one year for my husband's birthday. And it was two layers of chocolate, and in between, I had a crustless cheesecake that I like inserted in the oh, middle. Oh wow! Oh, that was decadent. And I, what I did was I just I halved this recipe and made this cheesecake. Oh, smart! And I just made it in a pan that like whatever I was using. I think I was using nine-inch cake pan, so I just used a nine-inch springform pan. Right. So, I get intimidated when a recipe talks about a water bath. Yeah, and and so I am. Um, I actually. And I am aware of that. I'm aware of that for a lot of people. So I'm going to explain that water bath as I do it. Okay. And I'm also going to take pictures. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm going to tell you that I already kind of got a jump on this because this is a long recipe. Yeah, otherwise we'd be doing this recipe for two freaking episodes. I know. So I will tell you that what I've done is I have already done the crust. And for my crust, because this doesn't call for a crust, I take... Original Oreo cookies. Okay. I take the original bag of them. 
Okay. Right. I use all the rows except for one. I don't know why, but I do. I think I use this, that last row for decoration. Oh, uh, yeah. So, okay. Or snacking okay. So, I, I take that and I put it in a food processor mm -hmm. with about a tablespoon of melted butter. Oh, yum. And I pulse it, pulse it, pulse it, pulse it until it becomes like graham cracker crumbs. Right. That consistency. Yeah, and you wouldn't need to add sugar like you would with graham cracker crumbs because no. it's already sweet. It's already in there. And the only reason I put butter in there is because butter makes it better. Oh, God, yes. So, and then I just press that into the bottom of my pan. Okay. This recipe calls for a nine inch right. spring form pan. Right. I'm going to tell you that I think it's better when you do it in a 10 inch spring form pan. Okay. This fills it right up to the very top, right up to the very edge. And I find that to be intimidating when you're putting it in the oven and, and all taking, that it out, stuff, yeah. taking it out. And I think that it would cook, it cooks better. Oh. But my problem is when you use a 10 inch pan, I don't have a roasting pan big enough to put that in to make oh. my water bath. Oh. The biggest pan I have that will fit is a nine inch. Sounds like a problem that Pampered yeah. Chef could solve. I'm thinking Pampered Chef or probably just freaking Walmart. I would get off my lazy ass and order one. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm using a nine inch today because of that, but I really feel that a 10 inch would be better. Okay. Okay. All so, right. And so I've made my crust. You don't have to pre-bake your crust because Oreos are already baked. Right. You press them in and then you do your, your recipe. And the recipe is really simple. It's everything that you're going to use is it starts at room temperature except for the cream. So you've got your um, cup of butter. You've got four eight ounce packs of cream cheese. Yeah. Important. You got five eggs. Those three things all need to be softened. Room temperature. Room okay. temperature. Okay. And then it just you do you grease and flour. You grease and flour your spring form, of course, before you put your stuff in your crust in. Now for this, do you grease and flour, or do you use Baker's Joy? I just use I use Baker's Joy or Pam flour. Oh, okay. Either one of those spray ones, and I just I do it very lightly on the bottom because there's butter on there, and I don't think that they're gonna stick. The one the part that I really worry about is the inner ring of the spring form. Of yeah. The spring form. Right. Yeah, but I don't want to put too much on there because I don't want to taste a chemical. Yeah. So anyway, and I'm lazy, and that's why I do the spray. Right. So um, so anyway, I'm gonna let you start, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna preheat the oven to 350. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in there at 350. But then I'm going to back it down to about 330, which is an odd number, but it's just the number that works for me. Okay. I'm going to cook it like that in the water bath. But I'll step everybody through it as we go. Understood. Yes. So All right. Ahead. Let's talk about murder. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about Lita LaVon McClinton. She was the daughter of a former U.S. Department of Transportation official and a Georgia state representative. Oh, she's... One of the elite. She was an Atlanta socialite, mm. and after college, she began working at an upscale boutique. Even though she graduated from Spelman College with a political science degree, wow. her first love was fashion. Well, I mean, I can't blame her for that. Yeah, I know. Smart, but savvy. Yeah. So while working at the boutique in 1975, Lita met a customer that swept her off her feet. Uh-huh. She was just 23, but her new love, Jim Sullivan, was 11 years older. Her parents didn't, didn't particularly care for that. He was also di divorced with four kids. They really didn't like that either. But that didn't matter to Lita. Yeah. She and Jim got married the following year in December of 1976. The couple settled down to a comfortable life in Macon, Georgia, mm -hmm. and Jim ran a successful liquor distributorship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jim. <laughs> now <got> I like him. <laughs> I like him. Like he had inherited that. Well, I like that even better. I know. And Lita worked at a department store doing her fashionista uh -huh, stuff, uh -huh. right? Seven years later, in 1983, Jim decided he wanted to sell his liquor business. Mm -hmm. And he sold it. So think about now when Bethany Frankel sold her skinny girl business. Mm -hmm. How much money she sold that for? Like millions upon millions of dollars. Well, Jim sold this for a pretty price himself. So he had he had a lot of he Did had a lot start of start with a B or an M. His was in the M's, but okay. this is 1983. Oh, that's 
that's like bees to them. Exactly. So um, he decided that he and Lita should move to Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. Make it hobnob with the rich and famous. Lita wasn't real keen on it, but she supported her husband, and they moved into an 18-room historic what? mansion. What? Oceanfront in Palm Beach. Why not? <laughs> and Jim just dove right into the elite social circles. Mm -hmm. Even though nobody had really heard of him, he was hobnobbing with political people and helping the mayor run her campaign and just oh, really why wouldn't you? loved to spend money on anything except for his wife. Right. When it came to Lita, he was a real miser, um, also known as a word I've not heard before, but a skin flint. Have you heard of that before? Well, now I've heard of a skin flute, but I don't think we're speaking of the same thing. I've not heard of that. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, it's not appropriate for this podcast. <laughs> a skin flint is a miser. Oh, okay. I mean, I've heard of a skin tag. No, still no. <laughs> still no. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, and really, he was a douchebag, honestly, when you read about I mean, really? him doing his thing. I mean, he was a little, he was a little extravagant over yeah, the top. He thought he was all that because he had a lot of money. But Oh, wait, I think we have somebody like that here in Charleston. Yeah, we kind of do. That can't stay out of the newspapers. And you're exactly right. OMG. And produces many children. Many. Yes. He spawns many, many, many minions. Yes. So, anyway, he was also having multiple affairs. Oh, oh my God. Very similar. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> is your name Jim or is it Thomas? How can you decide? <laughs> so, uh, it matters not. You're a scoundrel. And he, he really didn't care who knew about his affairs. He wanted them. Not even his wife? No. And Lita hung in there. Oh, Lita. For about eight and a half years of this crazy marriage. She oh couldn't take gosh. it anymore. That is crazy. So she packed herself up and moved back to Atlanta where they had another residence. So they had a nice, just have one. a nice condo in a very yeah. elite neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so she moves back to Atlanta, uh -huh. where her family is, and she immediately files for divorce. <laughs> she said, I'm out, I'm done, it's over. You go, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I have to take a sip. That's okay. I've got to take a little. <laughs> i got to spin around a little bit. So she was finding her way, you know, Get herself back together. She was very happy in her hometown and she was really finding her place in the world. Mm -hmm. She was very active in charity work Aww. and she even started dating her. again. I just really hope things turn out for her. Okay. <laughs> On January the 16th, 1987, Lita was excited. When she saw a flower delivery man at her door, Aww. it was going to be a difficult day because she was due in court for her the um, for her divorce settlement uh, that day. So she yeah. knew it was going to be a tumultuous day, and the flowers were going to be like a bright shiny spot. And she had a new bow. She oh. was dating. She's like, oh my god, that's, that's awesome. sweet too. Her best friend Poppy had spent the night with Poppy? her. Poppy, yeah. That name. Best friend since college. There you go. Um, and they were enjoying a chat. She was still in her pajamas. They were having some coffee. And Aww. she goes to the door and Poppy stays behind. Poppy had her three year old daughter was, was with them. Uh huh. So um, the next thing Poppy knows, they're gunshots. And she's not sure if they came from, like, from where they came. She was, un it was oh, unclear. Yeah, unclear. So she didn't really go anywhere. She just waited for Lita come, to come back. But the next thing she knows, there are police in the house. Oh, and she's like, what's going on? Well, they tell her that Lita had been shot. <gasps> when Lita opened the door, the man delivering the flowers shot her. No. Yes. That is bad advertisement for FTD. I mean to tell you. So, and the reason that the EMS worker got there so quick is that a neighbor had seen a man with a gun and flowers walking across the oh street my and called the police. That's see, why it was quick. See something, say, say something. something. Right. Well, come on. That's right. I like you. So Poppy, I mean, I just like that part. <laughs> Poppy calls Lita's mom while the EMS workers load Lita up and take her to the hospital. The doorway to Lita's house was covered in blood and pink roses. Sadly, Lita died. Oh, she did not much. make it. Um, but thankfully, the police had gotten there very quickly. Um, 
and the neighbor had seen the gunman who had approached Lita's door, and he was able to give the details to a sketch artist. So the florist was able to give police details um, about the man that purchased the roses, and there was a man who had stayed in, in a vehicle while the other man bought the roses. And oh. that florist was able to, to give a com enough information for them to come up with a composite sketch of all three of these. Okay. Okay. So, um, of course, they, they check on Jim Sullivan and ask him, you know, what's what's the deal, you know, man? Yeah. And he and his new girlfriend had an ironclad alibi. He was in Palm Beach at the time. There was no need for him to show up to the court case. Right. She was simply going to find out how much money the judge was going to award her that day. So um, the police did suspect, though, that he was involved somehow because when they did a search, they found phone records showing that he had made and received calls from a hotel in Atlanta before and after Lita's death. So they're like, okay, you might not have been there, but we're thinking you might be involved here, buddy. Yeah. Um, also, they couldn't let go of the fact that Lita stood to get a lot of money from that divorce settlement the day that her murder um, happened. Yeah. So that's, they, they, there's another red flag on old Jim. Oh, my gosh, But the, po the police didn't have a murder weapon. They had shell casings from a 9mm handgun. That seems to be the weapon of choice of murderers, for heaven's sake. And they had no idea who the shooter was, and they didn't even have enough evidence to arrest Jim. So three, three years after Lita's murder, the woman who Jim Sullivan had been having an affair with when he was married to Lita, her name was Suki Sullivan. Suki! Suki. Mm. Sookie told the court. We got Sookie, we got Poppy. Right. Ain't nobody Sookie, stopping us now. Sookie had gotten married to Jim. Oh. And they were going through a nasty divorce. And oh. while she was on the stand during her divorce proceeding, she let it slip that Jim had planned and paid for Lita's murder. And she said that he had celebrated Lita's death. Oh, did I say that in court? Yes. So <laughs> did I. I for a minute there and I just blurted that right out. But because her testimony was given during a heated divorce proceeding, the judge didn't feel like it was enough to charge Jim with anything. I mean, she could have just been saying it because she was mad. Okay, but how about like, okay guys, maybe we should investigate this. Right. Hello. <laughs> but in 1991, a federal grand jury did indict Jim on murder conspiracy charge. Okay based on the phone calls to and from Atlanta. Uh-huh. And, um, but the judge in that case dismissed it because he said there was a lack of evidence. Okay. So now we're like, okay, great. So in 1994, Lita's parents decide, well, guess what? We're going to take Jim to civil court. Mm -hmm. We're going to file a wrongful death case against him and say that Jim hired a hitman to pose as a flower delivery man to kill Lita so that wow. he wouldn't have to pay for his divorce settlement. And in this case, Jim decided, um, you know, because he was so rich and famous, <laughs> that he was going to defend himself. Oh, my God, that cocky little a-hole. What a great idea to go and defend you yourself. You've got all the money in the world, and you're too cheap oh, to this. hire an attorney. Oh, yeah, I got this. Yeah, he was too cheap to give his wife some money, too. Right. So the jury awarded the McClintons a $4 million <laughs> judgment. Oh my gosh. And then Jim said, well, listen, um, I understand that this has happened, but I've had something to tell you. I'm broke. I don't have any money. Excuse me. I cannot pay. I, I do not have any money. What? Okay. I don't right. believe this. Yeah. So in 1998, a tip came into police that a man in North Carolina had confessed that Jim had paid him $25,000 to murder Lena. I know, this is crazy. The man agrees to testify in exchange for a plea to voluntary manslaughter. Okay. Finally, the police have enough to charge Jim with murder. Oh, my gosh. Right. And this is what year? This is in 1998. And it happened in 91? It happened in 1989. Okay. Wow. So almost 10 years. Yeah. 1980. Nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
they were like, okay, good. But the problem is that poor, destitute Jim, poor guy, had disappeared because you didn't have any money. Mm-hmm. Didn't have any money to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, couldn't this, he couldn't. They couldn't. No. Couldn't no, afford, no, no, no. Couldn't afford a cab ride to the courthouse. No. Funny thing is, <laughs> police got another tip because there were a lot of people that didn't really like Jim. I can't imagine. And um, discovered that he had been living in a nice, <laughs> a nice little house in Costa Rica. Well, uh, he doesn't have any money. No, doesn't. He's living in Mexico. He doesn't have American money. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. It spins well in Costa Rica. That seems to. But by the time they get to his house in Costa Rica. Let me guess. He's gone. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Guess he took what? the money and run. Because they kept trying to find him, and now it's an international case, right? Mm-hmm. And steps the FBI. Okay. And they're like, uh, we don't play. We don't play, and we got a longer arm. We have a much longer arm. That's right. Yeah, they tracked him, poor destitute Jim with no money. He's now going through Venezuela and Panama. Why yeah. isn't he just living it up in the tropics? I know. I know. He's Jeez. doing his thing, wearing his Tommy Bahama outfit, and smoking his cigars. Well, uh, four years after Jim disappeared, the story of Lita's murder and the search for Jim aired on America's oh, Most fun. Dead. I mean, that's fun. It's not really fun. It, it is amazing. That show caught so many people. That's why shows like that are good. That's true. They're that's good. true. They shouldn't take them all over. No. So soon after the show aired, a tipster called in, mm-hmm. and that led authorities to a beachfront co- beachfront condo. Oh no, wait. I mean, a sorry little shack. Oh yeah, sorry little shack destitute. in uh, in Thailand. Oh my God. Where Jim and another girlfriend had been living. Another yeah. girlfriend. Yes, because he always had the ladies because he had the money. He had the money. But every time he got a girlfriend and they broke up, they said Jim liked to spend his money. He just didn't like to spend it on me. He didn't like to share it. Did it? Not making a lot of friends. No, not his parents friends. said, we're going to leave you with a lot of money, but we're not going to teach you to share it. Exactly. So almost, after almost two decades, justice is finally in reach. Oh my gosh, it's so great. Yes. They... Pick up old Jim, and they extradite him back to the U.S. in 2004. Mm -hmm. On February 27, 2004, the McClintons and their family and friends entered an Atlanta courtroom where Jim Sullivan was to stand trial for their beloved Lita's murder. If convicted, Jim could get the death penalty. Right. The case was largely circumstantial. And it had been 19 years since Lita's murder. Oh, my gosh. It was 19 be, years. Yeah. It was going to be real tough to find Jim guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah. The prosecutors called Lita's divorce attorney to the stand. And uh-huh. that attorney said that Jim was hell-bent on making sure Lita did not see a dime of his money. Oh, my gosh. Hell-bent. Yeah. He stood to lose a substantial amount of money the day Lita was murdered. The neighbor who had given the description of the gunman Mm -hmm. testified that he had seen the gunman and noted that he had picked the man out of a lineup, and that man was Tony Howard. Uh, No, not Howard, but Harwood. Harwood. So sorry, Howard. We're so sorry we brought you into this scandal. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, he's the man. From North Carolina that had confessed that he had been hired by Tony for $25,000 to kill Lita. Oh, yeah. And that's who the neighbor was able to pick out up out of a lineup. So okay. Okay. we're on something. Mm-hmm. So Tony says that he was working for a moving company when he met Jim because he had to deliver a piano to Jim's Palm Beach mansion. Because, you know, Jim, he's poor. Oh. Jim approached Tony about the possibility of helping him get rid of a problem, and Tony agreed. He said he, that he and Jim came up with a plan. So Tony and two of his friends drove to Georgia, checked into a hotel. Tony shows up at Lita's doorstep with the pink roses and shoots her. Oh my God. And when he was done, he called Jim and gave him the agreed-upon phrase to let Jim know the deed was done, and that phrase was Merry Christmas. Well, fuck 
fuck you. I <laughs> Exactly. So they were able to back up Tony's story with hotel receipts and phone records. And then Tony's ex-girlfriend was able to further confirm Tony's story because she went with Tony when Jim had passed him the $25,000 payment and a folded up newspaper and a diner off the highway. Oh my gosh. I know, like a movie. Oh, so it seems like Jim, <laughs> you just think really highly of yourself and you're just a dweeb. You are. You're not just a dweeb. Douchebag. Douchebag. Yeah. Douche canoe. Not nice, Jim. Not a nice guy. No. So it seems like a good case to me, but I mean, you know, they don't have a murder weapon and I know that's a big thing. And there's not really a paper trail because Tony, I mean, not Tony, but Jim knew how to hide his money. So, anyway. Yeah, it seems kind of circumstantial, but I say guilty. Right, but here's a little bit of a problem. Oh, no. Tony, he didn't do so good on the stand when Jim's attorney cross-examined him. And his story seemed to be a little shaky. <laughs> then the ex-girlfriend, she also, she didn't, she didn't really do so well either and they accused her of coming forward to get a reward that Leah's parents had put up for any information leading to an arrest in the murder. So it was a little shaky at the end. Mm. It took eight days for the attorneys to lay out their case but only five hours for the jury to come up with a verdict. Ooh. They found Jim guilty of malice murder. Oh, I like that. Jim Sullivan. Malice murder. Malice murder. Not just murder, but murder in the meanest way. Meanest. That is it's the meanest. It's a very mean it's murder. Very mean. Mm. Come on. Come on. Leah didn't deserve that, Jim. Nobody just, deserves to think, oh my God, I'm getting flowers. How exciting. Yeah, exactly. And then, no, you're not. I'm getting flowers and my divorce is going to be final. My life is looking up. I think I'm going to make it through this kaboom, through the. You're dead. Through the gizzard it goes. Right. I mean, Insane. Yeah. And that. To me, is one of the highlights now for the pandemic because anytime there's a delivery at my door now, they leave it at my door. They cannot shoot you because they have to they walk cannot, away. That's it's right. Contactless. I will. I will look through my people and make sure they're not out there that's before right. I even open my door to pick go up. Away, my boogeyman! So, on you go. That's Everybody's right. going to be doing that. For silver sakes. lining. From the only silver lining to the pandemic. <laughs> I know. So Jim was sentenced to. Um, Life in prison without the possibility of parole. Okay. And when they interviewed Lena's father after the sentencing hearing, this is what he had to say. We won the battle. He's not going to make a mockery of the court anymore. It's over, Jim. Merry Christmas. <gasps> yes. Yes. Who said that? Lena's daddy. Go get him. Merry Call Christmas, you jerk. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cheers to you, Mr. McMahon. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's so crazy. they uh they have been back and forth, appeals and all this other crap, but he's not going anywhere. He's gonna be <laughs> rock in jail for the rest of his life. That's the good thing about appeals. I mean not the good thing, but the thing that kind of lightens my the burden of thinking about that is that when they're appealing, they're still sitting their asses in jail. Yeah, it's very true. Lita was a very active volunteer for the cystic fibrosis community. Oh. She raised a lot of money for them. See what they lost? Um, they did. I yeah. Know. It is a waste of space. Just so you know somebody. how disgusting Jim really was because their divorce was not final <sighs> when she was killed. Her family had to call and ask permission when they wanted to donate her skin. They couldn't donate her organs because they were too badly damaged. Oh my gosh. But they wanted to donate her skin to a burn unit, which oh. is something that Lena would have liked. Yes. They had to ask Jim for permission. Yeah. And he said no. What a... Mm -mm. Yeah. I can't say it because Mama is listening. I know. And now that Dudley's probably I listening. I know. I already said one F word. Ugh. I'm just saying. I know. He's oh. so bad. It just stinks that the family even has to deal. Like, a judge should have come in and said, you don't even have to ask him. Yeah. You do what you think is right for your loved one. But back then, <sighs> nobody could prove that he had killed her, no. so they had to go through him. I know. It's and any life insurance that he had on her, he got. I know. They didn't say anything about life insurance. I'm just but saying. Lita's family 
firmly believes that Jim has stashed that money somewhere. Of course That there's money has. somewhere, because he was all over the world. Uh, of course. And they continue to look for it. And oh, they it's like have a treasure people hunt. that are helping him look for it so that they can make him pay that $4 million. But that $4 million has been earning interest. So oh. it's now up to $13.5 million. And for them, it's not about the money. It's no. not, because I really believe that if Lita's family got the money, they would donate it to Absolutely. a worthy cause. Yes, they would but probably donate it to something that she was very close him to. where it hurts because he's Yeah, because that's his pride and joy. Was, right. So here's another thing that I would be willing to trade off a little bit for money. It's like a digit for every million. Right. Yeah. But just take that like in six, every six months. Right. Not all at once. No. No. Every we'll six months. We're going to take a, a We're going to take a finger. We're going to take a toe. We're right. going to take a finger. And notice... It's 13, but it's probably going to have even more interest, so we're going to get up to 20 pretty easily. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen, I mean, can we skin him? Can we take little pieces of skin and donate? And donate it, it to the burn unit. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that, I wish. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I know. That's not a very Christian thing It's to not say, Christian, but... I but cannot help it, and I am drinking. So. FYI, <laughs> this is not a Christian-based um, <laughs> podcast, so... Just, I'm not saying we're not Christian. I'm just saying that's not in our vision. Well, here's the thing, y'all. We this. try. This is all you need to know is we do Jesus try. knows I try every day. He does. Cheers to you, Jesus. Cheers, Cheers to you, Jesus, <laughs> and your patience. Don't give up on me, Jesus. All right. What's happening with the cheesecake? Okay. You're very active in the kitchen. I feel like I almost need to turn my air conditioner down because it's heating up. I know, but it's okay. It's going to be worth it. Okay. okay. So this is what I did. I... I combined my butter, my cream cheese, my sugar, my eggs, my heavy cream, and then my cornstarch and my vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, and really, by the time you get to the, the heavy cream, it's more like stirring it until it mixes. Right. Not like on high power. And then I, what I do, which the recipe does not call for, is I take a half of a bag of mini chocolate chips, and, and I fold them into the batter okay after i'm you know before i pour it in right because you don't put oreos actually in your batter. i don't i just do uh and it really is more for color for right just the decoration part sure, yeah i don't know how much you really taste of those little morsels with that rich cream cheese but right. it still looks good so anyway so then i did my water bath and i'm going to explain the water bath okay so i took a roasting pan right i laid a um i brought my own dish towel I dampen it. I lay it in the. Is bottom. that because you thought my dish towels were dirty? No, because I don't want to. I don't want to get like a rust stain or oh, some thanks. kind of a weird appreciate. stain on yeah. your like a cute dish towel. Yeah, yeah, that's good thinking. I know, I know. So then you then you put your pan down in that, and then I, once the pan is on that damp dish towel, I put my batter into it because uh -huh. then you don't have to try to transfer it. And then you, I took one of your big glass paper chef bowls. Yep. And I put water in it, and I brought it to a boil. Okay. Like it's got to be a rolling boil. Okay. Okay. And I did that in the microwave. You can do that on the uh, on yeah, the stove. Yeah, if you're doing it in the microwave, be real careful because yeah, some people have had bad experiences. Yeah, rolling well. water is really tricky. Yeah. In the microwave. And so, we're not joking about that. No, like, no, no. It really is. You really could have The other thing I meant to tell you is when I started this whole thing, my pan, before I even started, once I got it floured, I took um, aluminum foil and wrapped it under the bottom of the pan, okay. so it comes all the way up, all of the sides. It's well, this is like an alien, up. an alien looking. It spaceship. does. It looks like a spaceship. <laughs> so, you, and so then you pour that boiling water into the roasting pan. Mm -hmm. I pour it into a corner, mm -hmm. and it goes. You pour it until it's halfway up the edge of your spring form pan. Okay. That's covered in oh, so it's a deep foil. bath. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that keeps it moist. Sorry, it keeps it moist, and <laughs> moist. it keeps it. it keeps keeps moist. the top from cracking because okay. a lot of times cheesecake will dry out in the oven. The and top. Cracks. Okay, yeah. so it's like a steam so bath. I put it in my three hundred and fifty degree preheated oven. Right, and then I back the temperature down to three thirty. Okay, don't know why. It's just the temperature that I pick. Now, if people ask for this recipe, are you going to send it with the modification? Yeah, I'll send it with the, it? I'll give the, the okay. modification. Okay. I'll give the real one and I'll give the side notes, okay. like Grandma used to say. Yes. You know, gin goes good here. Yes. Gold brandy goes good here. Right. Okay. So, this is going to cook for an hour mm. in the oven. Okay. 
I'm going to keep an eye on it because if it starts to get a little brown on the top, like if it starts to get a little golden, and I know I'm, I'm not, I'm more than 15 minutes out, then I'm going to make an aluminum foil tint. Okay. And I'm going to just, because you've already got the aluminum foil coming up on the sides, I'm going to gently place it over those sides so that it won't brown. Because okay. I don't like it when it browns. Do you mean I'm going to be watching it because you'll be doing your murder? Yes, but if if it need, if it starts to brown, we'll stop and I'll take care. I've already got the tent made. I'll so we I think I can manage to dry it. Well, I don't want to tax you or anything. I think I'll be okay. So once it bakes for an hour, you turn off the oven. You do not take it out and you do not open the oven for mm. another hour. Mm. Yes. Lord have mercy. I'm going to be so, too drunk to eat this thing. It's going to be through the magic of podcasting <laughs> that we'll be able to taste it at the end. Yes. But once it comes out after that, it has to refrigerate overnight. Okay. And I literally take the foil on the pan and I lift the whole thing up and put it in the fridge. Okay. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. But there's a spot already cleared in your fridge. The next box. time you do a recipe, if it is another one of these, it's got to sit in the refrigerator. I know. I'm going to kick you out. No, you're not, I'm because the last time when I made the French silk pie, you wanted the French silk pie. I did, but at least there was batter that we could taste That's true. after. This one doesn't have This one, you for real don't get just, until tomorrow. Yeah, you really don't. Yeah. I mean, we could have tasted the batter, but cheesecake raw is not that great. No, I don't want to taste the batter. <gasps> oh, my God. Do you remember that place that they used to have when we lived in the Virginia Beach area? We used to go to, what was that place called? It was in Norfolk and... It was Boardwalk. No. Oh, uh, what was it called? Waterside? Yes. Okay. And they had the food court yes. in the bottom, and yeah. there was the cheesecake ice cream. Yes. Place. It was <gasps> like cheesecake custard almost. Oh, it was my like gosh. A soft cheesecake. Yes. And they put in these little tiny cones, yes. and then they dipped the whole thing in cram cracker. Yes, crumbs. and rolled it right through. Oh, my there. God. So it was good. insanely delicious. So insanely good. So I don't have that. The days, and we wonder why we're overweight. Exactly. Why? Because we enjoy food. We, we express do. ourselves through food. We we're passionate. It. We are passionate. About food. About good food. About good things. Yeah. All good things. Yes. Namely food. Yes. And exercise bad. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. so yes, anyway. oh my gosh. Uh, what about that poor lady, the jogger in Florida, that discovered the human head on her jog? Yeah. Well, Hello. That happens. I'm not going to be jogging anymore. That's why I said this is why you don't. This is why I'm against no exercising Done. outside. Done. Don't do it. No, because you're going to run into either an alligator, yes. a snake, or a human head. Oh God. None of those things. Oh are good. Stay home. Eat your And in cake. Florida, she could have been struck by lightning. You're right. Because oh. it's the lightning state. All right. Stay right. home. Eat your cheesecake. <laughs> drink your Bloody Mary, and live your best life. Yes. That's all. And listen to us talk about murder. All day, every day. All right, we're going to put it on pause so Karen yeah. can get herself ready and she can tell her I'm story excited. about murder. Pausing. All right, I think we're back. We are back. And just to catch up on the cheesecake, it, it has come out of the oven and it is in the refrigerator. It has finished its bath. It has finished its spa bath. The bath is done. Yes. And so um, I'm just I was saying. able to successfully make a tent, y'all. I did it. I made the tent. Um, I had the tent made. She just had to put the damn thing on top. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but it can be a little tricky. Whatever. So, anyway. Right, what are you going to tell me about? Where, where, where did Girl, your I am in Kentucky. Oh, Lord of mercy. I mean, I just like bourbon, so I don't mind going to Kentucky. I've never <laughs> I been to Kentucky. I should have made you a bourbon drink. I love Kentucky. Kentucky. I love Kentucky. Uh -huh. I mean, I love bourbon. <laughs> I've never been to Kentucky. <laughs> love it if I went, but I've never been. I love bourbon. Would you love uh, another drink? No. Good <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> I'm be me walking downstairs in my apartment. I'm going to have to call an Uber to get me downstairs. <laughs> She's going to need an escort down. I'm going to need an Uber lift, otherwise known as a Luber. It's up. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Luber. And we're wasting one, Maybe probably. Just, oh, God. Okay, I'm going to start my murder. You just this take is, the elevator. You're good. It's called a lift. No, it's a dumbwaiter. <laughs> it is the way we yes. use it. <laughs> it's our own private dumbwaiter. It it's the craziest thing. Okay, I'm going to Kentucky. Oh. And I'm going to talk about Angela. I'm going to Kentucky. I'm going to the fair to see the pretty ladies with ribbons in their hair. Shut the freaking hell up. Come on, we used to do it for cheerleading. You don't remember that? I didn't do that one. Dance, I used to dance. 
Dance? No. Okay. I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. I just blocked it out. Okay. All I right. will talk about Angela Nicole Canada. Oh, okay. No, no, we're not at Canada. Uh, no, that's what's confusing. Uh, we're in Kentucky. She's a Canada from Kentucky. Yes. Oh. She actually lived in Canada Town. There's, no, <laughs> <laughs> there's a place in Kentucky, in Williamsburg, Kentucky, called Canada Canada Town. Okay. I think it's all where all the Canadas live. All right. I think they had a very. That's where they came from. A very skinny family tree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was born September 2nd, 1985. Her parents were Nancy and Bill Canada. Okay. Born in Williamsburg, only child. Hmm. At some point, Angela had two children. Mm -hmm. One bore the last name Canada. Okay. One bore the last name Frazier. So she didn't have an only child. Was it only child? She of was an only child of her parents. Oh, and Follow then she along had... with the vodka ball. <laughs> and then she had children. Yes. Oh, okay. that often happens. Oh my goodness. Ooh, <laughs> Good boy. God Almighty. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, she's had children, two different fathers, and she has changed her name to Fraser. So at some point, she also was married to the guy who she had the Fraser child with. I'm okay. just saying. Okay. okay. But then at some point they they divorced. But you know you don't have to be married to have your name changed. That's true, but I feel like she had, but you're right, she may not have. Right. Especially with these people. Oh god. Yeah. So um December 17th, mm -hmm. 2011. I can't count on my fingers to tell you how old she was at that point. Because the vodka has kicked I in. I won't retain it anyway. <laughs> no. She met Jason Singleton at a concert. Okay. Three days later, they got married. Three days? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, at least you know they didn't get married because she was preggers. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they actually got a marriage license at the courthouse and were married by a preacher, but the license was never posted, so the marriage was not officially registered. Okay. It's okay. official, but not registered. Yeah. So... It's kind of a gray area. Are they married or are they not married? Okay. All right. So January 16th, 2012, mm -hmm. 3.30 in the morning, Kentucky State Police respond to a report of domestic violence at the Singleton home where she lives with oh, Jason. Right. And um, Angela told the officers that Jason had ordered her to leave their home because he wanted to start living with a different woman. Oh, you mean her marriage to her three her days? Her whirlwind romance <laughs> but was not working out. out. Didn't seem to be. Wow. Mm -mm. He wasn't all that and she sobered up after the concert? Well, I mean, he he's the one kicking her out. She's trying to stick. Oh, she's like, damn. Yeah. She's trying to stick it out. I mean, she's Where like, I can do better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, um, while the trooper was still there, a friend of hers came and picked up Angela and they drove away. Okay. Okay. So later that day, Angela's Nissan Altima is discovered on the side of the highway. <laughs> but she said her niece Altima. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know if she had. She doesn't have a niece because she's the <laughs> only child. Oh my God. You're I victim don't. shaming. Oh You're victim shaming no. with all the vodka. No, I'm drinking. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Niece. Oh, Nissan. Lord. So her Nissan Altima. <laughs> was discovered on the side of a highway with the engine compartment burned out. Oh, no. Yes. By Wednesday, Angela's mother files a missing person's report. Okay. Two days after the car was found. Angela is now considered endangered and missing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, County Deputy Clerk Amy Smith told police that on July 18th, which is the day before... They were called. Uh -huh. She got a phone call so strange that she decided to take notes while on the phone call. What? <laughs> yeah. And about I'm three, now. I don't no, want to refer back. I don't want to know. I don't <laughs> want to remember this. Okay. About three thirty in the morning, in the afternoon. Sorry, because they don't work like, at three thirty a.m. It's the vodka what? talking. Jeez. <laughs> Jason Singleton called her office with a burning question. Burning? Oh, a burning Ultima question? He wanted to know, am I legally married if my wife tore up our marriage license? Oh, right. So, 
The clerk explained that if they had been married by a preacher, which they had been, uh -huh. they're married in the eyes of God. Okay. She also explained that since they never turned in the certificate within the required 30 days to register the marriage, in the eyes of the court, they're not married. Oh, no. So there's a little gray area. Point of confusion. Seems like... Cool beans, I never married her. Well, at that point, he continues to have a conversation, and Mr. Singleton said he didn't know if he needed a divorce attorney or a or an emergency protective order. Oh. Also known as an EPO. <laughs> <laughs> In case you needed to know. Thanks. Yeah. So he then continued to say. Angela had called him on the phone and said if he paid her a bunch of money, uh -huh. she would leave him alone. So he gave her money. Uh -huh. And then a couple days later, she called again and said she lost that money. She needed more. I can't find that money anywhere. I can't find it. I put it in the suitcase. I don't know I put it, it right is. next to our marriage certificate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. sure it's here somewhere. Exactly. But in the meantime, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need some more to get me through. So after the clerk, so the clerk puts him on hold and she goes to talk to her boss <laughs> and one of the county attorneys that are in the in the office. Right. She's like, I, I don't know what's happening. So then she comes back and she says to Jason, if you got married, if you got remarried and your first wife can prove that she was married to you and you had not gotten a divorce, you could be charged with bigamy. Oh. Right. Okay. Bigamy. Oh. But. So. Oh, so what this is saying. It's a gray area. This was his first wife. And if he got married again. Mm -hmm. Oh, see. Yeah. yeah. See, it's a little sticky wicket. Okay. And she's not real sure what this man's driving at. She's just trying to give him as much education as she can. Yeah. So the next day, a farmer finds several large, full garbage bags that had been dumped along his property on the side of the road. By golly. Upon further investigation, there was discovered there was a head. Uh, there was a head. Oh, right. Yeah, right. right. A head. And six other bags that contained all body parts. Okay. State trooper. I wonder who it is. Well, Bubba Bobkin went on the scene. Bubba. <laughs> Come on now, Bubba. I mean, when you have a Bubba. Who is it? In your story, you know you're, you're just okay. golden. Yeah. Golden. Who is it, Bubba? So, state trooper Bubba Bobkin <laughs> said that the body's description and the head matched that of the description of Angela Singleton, who was missing right. and endangered. So, he felt strongly that Jason was responsible for murdering Angela, and they had found Angela. Well, that Bubba, he's a smart cookie. He said he did it. I'm not going to talk to him about it. I'm mm -hmm. just going to assume he did it. So a search warrant for Jason's home was obtained. Mm -hmm. The warts, the wart. <laughs> and now we have warts mm -hmm. involved. <laughs> you can't get your drink down. It took a turn for the worst. Yeah. The warrant stated that the Lord of mercy stop, had done stop. He's being fine. He, killed, he murdered. There's a murder going on right now, guys. It's a long yellow toy and... <laughs> Trout is the suspect. But he's being quiet. The warrant stated that police were looking for any item, including power tools, that could be used in the cutting <laughs> or chopping, uh, as cutting or chopping instruments. But in walked up in there and said, Mr. Singleton, I'm going to need to see your saw. I'm going to need to see if you got you a saw. <laughs> you got me saws? They were also looking for weapons, firearms, knives, blunt objects, and anything that could be used in a murder, as well as anything that could be used in the concealment or disposal of a body. Like a bag. They're looking for a whole lot of shit. Okay. Okay? So, here are the items that were seized in the search. Okay. Here they go. A pretty new Black & Decker Firestorm circular saw with an extension cord. Okay. Mm. Two Chicago cutlery knives. Wow. A Farberware knife. Far Farberware? I don't know where Farberware wow. is from, but they specifically said that's what it was. Wow. A buck knife. A, well, if you kill a buck, you got to have a buck knife. Yeah, you do. Several blood samples from the carpet and other locations inside the home. Okay. A box of Glad Force Flex Extra Large Trash Bags. See, I have those. Yeah, me too. You must have murdered somebody. Dang it. A box of Husky Drawstring Trash Bags. Well, now I don't have the Huskies. And a box of Kroger Brand Drawstring Trash Bags. Mm, we, we 
we got Harris Teeter here. We don't do the Kroger. Yeah, but I'm just going to say what I deduce <laughs> from these multiple trash bags is they don't have brand loyalty. No, they really no don't. Brand loyalty. Whatever's on sale. It it's obviously. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do it. You got to do it. They also took the drain traps from the kitchen and bathrooms. Okay. Look. That just makes me. <laughs> I mean, I know what my drain traps look like on a normal basis. And I wouldn't want anybody. Such a lot of <laughs> I wouldn't want anybody taking my drain traps and looking at them. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a person when you look at their drain traps. Mm. So on January twentieth, mm -hmm. Jason stole a car it, because she took the Ultima and burned it out. Listen, he stole a car at the Somerset Mall oh. and held four people hostage at gunpoint. Oh, Jason. <laughs> Jason has lost now, his shit right dang. now. He's gone. Oh, he's gone amok. Amok, amok, amok. Yeah, he's Jason's just gone out of amok. Control. I could have stood up for the man, but she lost <laughs> me at Hit the four people at gunpoint. At, right. That's got the, you got to stop that shit. So when Sheriff, when Sheriff, because <laughs> I'm on a, we're on a nickname basis, me and Bubba, I just call him Sheriff. <laughs> oh shit with the vodka okay. so when the sheriff finally talked to Jason into giving himself up he told the Somerset deputies that he had done a bad thing oh no too terrible to talk about and that the state police were probably looking for him unspeakable unspeakable things he also stated that he really wished the deputies had killed him in a shootout <laughs> So much I mean, easier guys, if it just would have looked so much better had I gone down in a blaze of glory. <laughs> and at the time, detectives noticed that Jason smelled strongly of smoke. Right. And his clothes and skin appeared to be covered in soot. Really? Mm -hmm. Some kind of an Ultima soot. <laughs> <laughs> to Jason's new girlfriend. That's a good idea because sure she's feeling real good right now. Christina Markham. So she shows up at headquarters and she tells them that she watched Jason strangle Angela on January 18th. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, hey guys, how y'all doing? Yeah, I watched, I I watched, watched that. Him. I watched that. I didn't feel like calling that day. I mean, I didn't like the girl, so I just let it happen. I mean, it was best if we got rid of her anyway because he, he couldn't marry me. Exactly. So detectives... Now, she wasn't disclosing everything she knew, so they were able to charge her with tampering with physical evidence and first-degree hindering. Oh, wow. That hindering, hindering, it's called first-degree hindering prosecution or apprehension. We get you. Okay, she's hindering. You're a hindrance. So, she was then held on a $500,000 bond at the jail, and so was Jason. Okay. Okay. So, March not 2000. Not a mystery around this one. Not a lot. <laughs> but I still got some explaining to okay. do. Okay. <laughs> March 2014, the trial begins for Christina. Okay. Why had the trial not started for Jason? I don't know. He copped. Oh, my God. I almost said he copped a field. Oh. <laughs> he copped. Well, that was just a time off of good behavior. <laughs> he copped a plea deal. <laughs> and he pled to complicity. To murder. What does that mean? I, I'm fine if somebody gets murdered. Oh. I'm fine. Like, I watched, I saw a person get murdered and I was fine. I was complicit. Really? Mm -hmm. That's so dumb. Why did they let him plead to that? I don't know. If he killed her. So he was, he was charged with the, the hostage situation and he was good, he was serving 10 years for that. Okay. And then he got 30 more years on top of that for complicity to murder. Is that enough? I don't know. Is it? If you strangle your wife, is you that up? enough? No. Okay. So we're going to talk about this trial with Christina because this is a three ring circus. Okay. So he had told detectives and prosecutors that Chris <laughs> prosecu prosecutors. <laughs>
her dismember and dump Angela's body. Oh, so they really didn't know who did it. Can't figure it out. Oh, so Christina was being charged with murder, mm -hmm. dismemberment, mm -hmm. tampering, mm -hmm. and that hindering. First degree hindrance. Holy crap. Is that what Jason? It was Christina? No, that's not what I said. Yes, it is. No, that's not what I said. Yes, it is. No, that's what he said. <laughs> it's not what I said. It's just what he said. But how can you trust him? He took four people a hostage at gunpoint. And he was covered in soot. <laughs> he didn't even get a bath for that. I'm sure he was telling the truth. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> you and Jason have a happy life. Go ahead. <laughs> So, Christina's defense team, they um, entered a not guilty plea. They said she didn't do any of she this. Didn't. She did she not do anything. Watch, She's I saying didn't, now, I didn't, get out. I didn't watch. I just knew about it. Oh, I, just, I, didn't, I, didn't, I just knew, but I didn't see it. So, they also tried to say that she had been diagnosed with PTSD from being abused by Jason. Of course. Of course. So... The prosecutors. Nicely done. Oh, that was really a lot. Okay. They wrote in court documents that in order to understand Christina's motive to kill Angela, one really needed to be aware of the obsessive, volatile nature of her relationship with Jason. Oh, my. So we're going to go through this a little bit. Okay. Her behavior had gotten more and more bizarre and hostile towards Angela when Jason married Angela. Okay. Proving that she had motive and opportunity to commit the murder, and they intended to disprove the PTSD diagnosis. Okay. So Jason and Christina, who then was named Christina Tompkins, mm -hmm. they had been engaged. Oh. Oh, when he got married? Nope. He was okay. engaged before he met Angela. Oh. The relationship was quite rocky. And it was marked with a lot of domestic abuse by Christina to Jason. Oh, no. Records showed several incidents that happened, including one where she assaulted Jason. Uh-oh. And because, and she did that because he had looked at another woman. Oh, dear. Then he went out and took an EOP. Oh, right. What is that? What is or it? Some kind of protection order. It's an emergency, emergency. order of protection. He took that out against her, only to have her come back and break it by throwing a cell phone at him and striking him in the head. <gasps> what? She's just nasty. She's mean. So she pled guilty to assault and went to jail. Okay. When she got out of jail, she didn't even give Jason the time of day. Mm -mm. She went straight to her ex-high school boyfriend's house, Nick Markham. Mm -hmm. She moved in, and within two weeks, they were hitched. Oh, they, oh we And don't... they found that. We don't they court got, for long periods of time in Georgia, do we? Well, we're in Kentucky. <laughs> I don't know what they do in Georgia, but we're in Kentucky. I can no longer participate in this, this uh, episode. Trap, you can just alone. get right up here and just do this with Leave me. Leave him alone. I'm on my He's own, guys. Good. He's good. Okay, so within two weeks, they're married. So Jason goes out and meets Angela when he finds out Christina yeah, is rebound. married. And then marries her within three days. Of course. This pisses Angela off. Not Angela. Christina. Christina's mad. I got married, but you're not allowed to get married. What she got mad about was that he moved his new wife into the home that she once shared with Jason. Pissed her right off. So they Angela, to... you don't belong there. Oh. Don't belong. <laughs> but. So Long. you can be married to him, but you cannot live in the house that I share. Evidently, with marriage just is a, it's just you not You should have really, gotten your own apartment, Angela. I, I, Angela probably agrees right now. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Angela moves into the home that Jason shared, had shared with Christina. Christina's pissed off. She constantly harasses and threatens Jason and Angela at that point. She would park outside their house at 4 o'clock in the morning and lay on the horn. Oh, God. <laughs> until Jason would come out and talk to her. Mm. Like, mm-mm. So she openly hated Angela. Publicly hated her. Oh like, God. everybody knew. She said it all the time. She threatened to kill her. She came by one day and broke windows out of their home. Oh. And told 
someone that she had actually peed on the doormat of the front door. Oh my lord. She nasty. You are nasty. She is a nasty girl. She is. I don't like her at no. all. No. So two days before Angela went missing, Angela called 911 at 2.30 in the morning and said Christina had shown up and damaged her car and threatened her saying, I do not make threats. I make promises. Okay. Tough girl. Well, turns out she was pretty well, tough. she did. <clears throat> Later that day, Jason called the police saying that he was trying to make Angela leave, but she wouldn't leave because they were married. Right. Yeah. Duh. So then Angela called police. I mean, the police are very busy right now. Yeah. So then Angela called the police to say Jason had changed the locks and his parents and Christina were and Jason were all trying would not let her back into the house to get her stuff. Why? Poor Angela. I'm gonna tell you why. They said Christina is Jason's wife, not you. She's married to somebody I, else. Doesn't matter. It's what you feel in your heart. It's oh. not what the legal documents say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is happening? It is happening. It's happening. It's happening. So run, Angela. Run. She did. She did. She didn't make it. So two days later, her head is found in a trash bag. And Jason's got no kahuna, so he's not going to stand mm -hmm. up to the women in his life. No. So when Jason was arrested, he was wearing Nick Markham's clothes. Oh, with Nick. Christina's husband. Nick, you're in trouble too, buddy. I don't even know if he's still alive. Run, oh, Nick, run. And he had Nick's credit card that he had been given to, by Christina. Does that sound like somebody who was scared of a guy? Oh, uh, let me tell you Is something. she suffering from PTSD? No, but I think that her poor husband was probably... The He's the one with PTSD. Yeah. He's got ass pucker right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, holy shit, I gotta get the hell out of here. I'm going to Georgia. <laughs> oh, yeah. He should just go to Georgia. Yes. Yep. I so, think our chips are a little longer in Georgia, too. <laughs> so it might be a good idea. Yeah. Like, lessons learned, Nick, if your ex-high school girlfriend shows up on your doorstep because she just got out of jail and she wants to move in with you, just say no. say no. I think people were scared of her. I, I think you might be right. She'll pee on your porch and she won't think twice about oh it. Oh, my God. I, have you That's ever disgusting. in your life thought about peeing on no. someone's anything? No. Oh, my God. No. No. That's not no. on purpose. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I've accidentally peed places I shouldn't or whatever. <laughs> Okay, Christina even visited Jason in jail. They have court records of it. Okay. And she put money on his jail account using the fake name Winky Winky. <laughs> she visited him that she would be willing to seduce the lead investigator and have sex with him to influence the case away from Jason and onto somebody else. Oh my god. She is a real jewel. So bad about her. Right? She's no just trying to Jason's out. parents wanted her oh, to yeah. be Jason's oh. wife. Oh yeah. No wonder. Makes perfect sense. So a female witness also testified that Christina had intimidated and threatened her after police had interviewed her during the investigation. Wow. Like she followed her to <laughs> her job, followed her to make a bank deposit, and then followed her, like was following, stalking her, and then screaming at her saying, you've just sealed my coffin. You have to tell me what you told them. And she's like, I, I, I just answered the question. Oh, my God. And I told them things they already seemed to know. Oh, right. Like, if I, I don't know what else to say. Like, she wasn't even part of the murder <laughs> scheme. Like, she's just being called out. By Christina, because they were old high school friends. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and that girl was butt hurt, because she was like, that girl used to be my friend. Oh, Lord. She ain't my friend no, no. more, not my friend. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, anyway, Christina was found guilty for complicity, mm. not murder, because mm. they can't prove who did it. Dang it. But she also got the tampering and the hindering. I don't think that's enough. She got 30 years, just like Jason. Is that enough? No. No. Her first parole date is in 2027. Her earliest release date is 2028. If she acts a fool in jail, which I'm just expecting her to, it's going to be 2042 before she gets out. Well, I must pray for the 2042. <laughs> but let me tell you, she a nasty bitch. That's what I wrote. She, she a nasty N-A-S-T-E-E-E -E -E bitch. She not nice. She grossed. Yeah. She grossed. Yeah. 
She had a gross girl. Dang, and that's what happened in Kentucky. Good Lord, what is going on down there? Court your people a little bit longer and don't drink Bloody Marys when you're trying to do a oh serious podcast. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. So, I'd like to tell y'all we were going to pause and try some of this freaking no, cheesecake. No, okay. Because of the absolute magic of uh, editing. Right. Editing, magic. We're going to taste Just it. Just pause the mother freaking flipping. <laughs> I'm going to pause mother, it. Fudger, fudger we're going to taste the cheesecake. Hold on. Okay, we're back. We're back and now we've had some coffee. We've had some coffee. Up. We're good. We slept overnight and we sobered up. Thank and now God. we're going to taste this cheesecake, which looks fantastic. <laughs> thank you, sugar. It's beautiful. I thank you. And it didn't I, crack at all on the top. It didn't. It really didn't. It it's the amazing. bath. It's all about the spa. You did a great job at the spa. Thank you so much, sugar. So let's taste okay, it. Okay. And I put a little Oreo on top for I you. Know. I know. Can I have that? Yeah, you can have that. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. I like a cold Oreo when it gets kind of soft. Yeah, I don't um, like it when it gets like that. I don't like it crisp or I don't like it. Uh, so, figures. I know. All right, All right let's, let's go. taste it. What do you think? Oh my God. That is delicious. Thank you, Shoko. It's very good. I love that crust. It's so mm. creamy. It's not mealy at all. It's not mealy. You it's did not a really creamy. great job. Yeah. It's no. good. I did it. Yay. Did it. Yay. Yay. Okay, y'all. So Two successful recipes. Before we forget and before we start drinking again. Yes. So um we have social media. Oh wait. Can oh. I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Now that we're sober. Yeah. Was I supposed to cook this big or you? No, no, it's my turn. You did squash casserole. Oh, last week. oh let me tell you about the squash casserole, y'all. It was good. It was very good. But. It could have been better. It could have been. I, I've I had, had better from you. I know. And I think what happened was I didn't mush the water out. When you're making that squash souffle, if you don't smash your squash and onions after it's steamed in a strainer really, really good, then you're going to get a watery casserole. And I think that's what happened with mine. It and it didn't watery. seem watery when you were eating it. It didn't have any flavor. It just didn't have as much flavor as normal. And I'm going to tell you. I think because you didn't have the breadcrumbs, yeah, that adds a little bit of crunch, but it adds a lot of flavor. flavor. Yeah, and I think that was missing. Yeah, so, so that might have been a little bit of a flop. But she's gonna do a redo bit. though, because I, I had squash to donate to the cause. Yeah, I'm doing it over. So anyway, social media. Yes. Please find us. Oh my gosh, we had a new fan <gasps> that emailed us this yes. week. It was so good to hear from her, from and she was from Spokane, a, outside of Spokane, Washington. Yes, that was so good. She just said she found us on Pandora and really was enjoying the show. And so I'm really pleased to say that we have we picked up a new listener. Is it Spokane or Spokane? I have met people from that area and they call it Spokane, but Spokane. it's it's um, spelled with an e, so it should be a long a. It should be Spokane. Listen, but but I just say Spokane. <laughs> if you listen to us, Marie, maybe just let us know. Yeah, is it just Spokane us. or Spokane? Yeah, it's like saying, is it pecan or pecant? I don't know. No, <laughs> just kidding. I don't either. Pecan or pecan. Yes. Well, anyway, welcome to the circle. Welcome Marie. to the craziness. Thank we you, are so happy. You, and anybody you. else that's out there listening, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from people that listen to us. So you oh, can find. I got thing oh, to say. Good I'm God. so sorry. I but our the murder that I did today with Lita, yeah, that came from one of our fans, Haley. Oh, Haley, thank yes. you so much for sending that yes. in. That's wonderful. Yes, so glad. Thank oh, you. I we love, love it from people that follow us and that listen to us. I just, I love it. So it makes us feel a little bit loved. A little bit, yeah. We and we need to feel a lot more loved. Just saying. yeah. So um, email us because we are absolutely to the core insecure, and so we need to hear from you. <laughs> yes, and that. Email address is murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com. Ta-da! Yay! And we have, um, follow us on the Instagram, and we're that's at Sugarcoated Murder. And then also we have a Sugarcoated Murder podcast page on Facebook. And then we also have a private fan page. So you can um, find the fan page, I think, through the, maybe through the other you things. Just, you just search Sugarcoated, just, it's Sugarcoated Murder podcast fan page. Right. You can search for that on Facebook. On no. Facebook. <laughs> oh, on Facebook. Not enough coffee. Yeah. On Facebook and yeah. uh, 
And, and then you can find us and you can join us. We'll, we'll accept. We accept all people that yeah. try to join. We're not picky. So, but we love y'all so much and we hope that you're staying safe. Oh, and wait, that, and we have a website. And we have a website. Don't forget it because I just did. It's sugarcoatedpod.com. Okay. And so I think that's all the announcements we have. Yeah. Unless, unless you have anything else. Uh, no. Okay. Y'all stay sweet. Yes. Y'all thank stay you safe. For Wear sticking a mask. Out. Wash your damn hands. Stay loved because we love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Yes, and don't go by the name. We, 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 we know who you are. Yes. All right, love y'all. Bye.